Hello guys and welcome to Program Arrest. Today I will talk about idempotent and associative logic. Let's assume we have a game with two players. Okay, it is an online game and there is the internet that uh, is between the players. They are playing against each other and we want each of the players to know the score of the other players uh, to make them play a little bit harder or the other way around, if they see that their score is high enough, they can relax and play very relaxfully. So, for example, the first player's score is 13 and the second player's score is 15. Okay, so we want to transmit the score to the other player. Okay, so for this example and for this video, I'll ignore the score of the second player. Okay, I will ignore it. Ugh. I don't care what's his score. All I want to do is transmit the first player score to the second player. Okay, I want to be able to uh, write here 30. Okay, that's what I want to do. So let's assume we have a situation in the time that both of the sides know exactly what's the score of the first player. Okay, so the first player knows his score is 13 and we in some magical way transmitted it to the second player as well. And now the score changes. So now the second, the first player score, sorry, the first player score changed from 13 to 17. Okay, and we want to transmit this 17 to the second player. Okay, so the first solution that can come in, uh, in mind that every time the score changes, we simply gonna transmit it. Okay, this, the new score is 17. Okay, and when the second player receives this info, he will update the score to 17 as well, okay? But we have a problem with this approach. The problem is what happens when the score changes from 13 to 17 and immediately after that changes to some other value, for instance, 19, okay? And we are sending 19 here. The issue with the internet uh, that the order of the messages we are sending, if you are not making sure of it, and we're not doing something about it, they can change. For example, this 17 may take some route until it gets to the uh, to the second to the player to the second player. But the 19 can have a different route, which is much quicker and may arrive quickly. Now the 19 score arrives much quicker to the second player. Okay, and now he will update the score to be 19 when this message arrives. And when the second message arrives, he will update the score to 17. So, as you can see, the second player thinks that the first player score is 17, uh, even though the first player score is actually 19. So, we have this kind of problem. This example illustrates what associativity means. It means that changing the order of the messages changes the final result of the uh, logic. Okay, so this logic is not associative. So let's look how can we solve it and make a logic uh, be, feel like it is associated. Let's implement it in a different way, okay? So for example, if the, again, the first player score changed from 13 to 17, what we're gonna do, we're gonna send this, send this message to the second player. But when we get the second change, the change to 19, we're not gonna send the message until the first score arrives doesn't matter how long it takes okay it will arrive to the second player he will change it to 17 he will send us an acknowledgement that will take another some time we will receive the acknowledgement that 17 change is done and now we will send the 19 change again it will take some time he will change it to 19, he will send us acknowledgement, okay, 19 has been changed, and uh, so on, okay? So what are the problems with this solution? Well, there are two major problems. Well, first of all, we need to implement this kind of logic, okay, the logic that goes over here. I know it is messy, but uh, try to understand. We need to implement the logic that waits for the messages to arrive and the scores can change a lot, okay, 21, can quickly change to 22. So we need to implement some, some kind of queuing logic 
that will queue all the score changes and will wait until the first score of the queue is arrives, it, it is handled and then we can uh, pop the uh, score, the next score, the next update. So this is, uh, this makes the logic more complicated. Another problem with this is that what happens if the 17 update, okay, it takes very, very long time to arrive to the second player. <clears throat> now the updates about the 19, 21 and 22, they will need to wait all the time before it will be sent. So although the score changes very rapidly, the second player will only get the notice about the, these events only a long time after the update about the 17 score is sent to the uh, users. So the, we will have a big delay of the score. Okay, so let's try to avoid this approach and avoid using queues. So let's try a different approach. What will happen if, for example, if we change from 13 to 17, our score changes from 13 to 17, we'll instead, instead of sending the 17, we will send our score got larger by 4, okay? And when the second player received it, receives it, he, he adds 4 to the score and gets the score of the first player. Okay, let's look at this example. Uh, so what will happen in this case if the scores get mixed up, okay? The messages arrive in different order. So for example, we have a change of 17, we are sending our score change by 4, and we have another quick change that says that our score changed by 2, okay? From 17 to 19, it is exactly 2. And for some reason, these messages got mixed up inside the internet and they arrived in different order. Okay, so what will happen now? This message, the plus two, will arrive first and the second player will change the score to be 15. And when the plus four, plus four uh, message arrives, he will change it to be 19. So as you can see, we arrived at the same final result Although in the middle we had a different result, but uh, it, you may not care about it as long as it seems real and the final result will be the same. After all, both the messages arrive, the final result is the same. This approach has two problems which makes it impossible to, to be used at all. Okay, so let's think about this section okay, and how we use it. So for example, the score changes from 13 to 17, so we are sending that our score uh, is changed by plus 4. We have two ways, two major ways, sending information inside this medium, inside the internet. We can use a protocol that makes sure that this thing arrives to the other side, which is usually a TCP protocol. And we can use a protocol that sends a message and doesn't really care, doesn't check whether the score arrives to the other side and it is usually a UDP protocol. Okay, so let's look at each of them and how this approach has problems. No, it doesn't really matter which protocol you're using. Okay, so let's start with the UDP. Uh, so we are sending the plus four, okay? And for some reason, there had a bad connection in some uh, gateway and we lost this package. So when we're sending another package about ch the change of plus two, it now arrives and it changes from 13 to 15. And the second player thinks that our final score is 15, although it is 19. And in this way, we will never get this plus four package, plus four message and the score will always be in delay and will be lower than the actual score, okay? So we cannot use the UDP protocol. Now let's look at what happens when we are using the TCP protocol in this approach. So we are sending the plus four, okay? And let's assume it arrived in great way and he updated this to be 17 and sent us an acknowledgement, okay? An ACK and this ACK got lost somewhere in the middle. Okay, so now we have a timeout on this side and we're sending this plus four again. 
okay? We're, we're not actually sending, our code doesn't do it, but the TCP layer does it for us. When it gets a timeout about the acknowledgement, it will resend this plus four message, and this plus four message will arrive, and the score will change again to be 21, and this time the score will be much bigger here than here, so again, we have a problem with the TCP protocol, so it doesn't matter what approach we're check we are taking, TCP or UDP, this method will give us, uh, in some ways when messages are lost, uh, it will give us the wrong result on the other side. So this actual problem with the TCP, okay, it is actually a problem with a potency of these messages, of this logic. What it means? It means that receiving the same message and doing the same logic multiple times gives us different result. Okay, so we receive the plus four message two times and the result of receiving it two times or three times or four times will be different from receiving it single time. So this is not an idempotent logic, okay? Again, meaning that doing the same logic multiple times will give us different results. Now let's look at our final approach that will solve all the problems and it goes like this, okay? That every time our score changes, what we're gonna do, we're gonna send the score to the other side, the final score, and when the second player receives this message, he will update it to the maximum between the score that he has and the message that, that arrives. So, for example, let's look how it solves both uh, the cases where the messages switch and when the message arrives multiple times. Okay, and let's make it even harder. Let's make both of these cases happen simultaneously. So we sent the message about the 17 and the 19 scores and for some reason this message got arrived first, the 17 message arrived later and we lost the acknowledgement about the 19 message and it got resent again and we're receiving it one more time. So again, this is an update about 19, this is an update about 17, and again, this is an update about 19. So we are having the issues about order, okay? The order of the messages is changing now and we're retransmitting some of the messages simultaneously, okay? Some of, both of the cases are now happening to us. So let's see how this logic uh, deals with it. So, for example, what happens when we get the 19 message? We'll update it to the maximum between 13 and 19, and it will be 19. When the 17 arrives, we'll update it to the maximum between 19 and 17, which will still be 19. And again, when 19 arrives, it will change it from 19 to be 19, because the maximum between 19 and 19 is again 19. So the final result is 19. Okay, so it doesn't matter in which order the messages arrive and it doesn't matter uh, that uh, we are transmitting the same message again and again and again. We will have the same result. Okay, even more, if for example, the, we have another update, okay, about our score changing to 21 and we are sending it and for some reason, we're not tracking it, we're using UDP, okay? So, we are, this message is lost, and in some other time, our, uh, our score changes to 27, I wrote here 27, you probably can see it, and I'm, seven and I'm sending an update about 27, it will arrive, and we will change it to be 27, so although this score update didn't arrive to the other side, as long and as in some point in the future, as we continue sending scores, the scores will arrive, we'll, we will set the score to be a correct result. Okay, so this approach actually uh, solves three problems. The retransmission of the messages, the order change of the messages and uh, messages lost. Finally, after a long time, the score will be a correct score. Okay, after enough messages arrive, the score will be the, will be the correct score. Idempotent and associative logic can also help us uh, when we're using the pop-sub pattern. And if you're not familiar with the pop-sub pattern, you can see the video that I made last week about it by clicking over the top right corner of this video. And 
uh, or you can click on the description, I put a link to the uh, video. So, let's think about this problem, about our problem uh, with the players as a pub-sub problem. So, the player 1 is a publisher, the player 2 is a subscriber, and we have a queue that the player 2 is subscribed to it, and he pulls messages from the queue, and the internet is between the publisher and the queue. Okay, so we can think about the queue as a different service <clears throat> that the player 1 is publishing to it and the player 2 is subscribing to it. I've put it very close to the player 2 because uh, probably it will see it will sit uh, like in the back end and this will be some kind of logic, our back end logic and this will be some kind of client like a web client that will send the message to the queue and the queue service will be very very close to our backend service. Okay, so uh, this is what I've put here but it doesn't really matter. So <clears throat> the first player sends messages, okay, and then ca they can arrive in some order, some may arrive first, some may arrive last, and if our logic is associative, we don't care about the order, okay, as long as we receive all the messages and we handle them, finally, after handling after this point, our final result will be the same, it doesn't matter in which order these messages arrived. Okay, so if we are associative, if our logic is associative, this problem is actually not a problem. Now, let's look at the other end of the equation. What happens if the subscriber, which gets messages, okay, and handles them, at some point, if he dies, okay, if he crashes. And now he's coming back alive again, and we want to recover after the crash. The simplest way to recover, if we are idempotent, is simply rerunning Rerunning all the messages since the last time we've been alive and we've marked one of the messages as the last message that we've handled. So, for example, if we're handling the messages in batches and we received a batch of 10 messages and we've, st we've started handling them and we've handled like 3 or 4 messages and we've crashed, we, when we get up again, we're again asking uh, the same batch that we didn't uh, didn't handle and we didn't mark as handled before, we're receiving the same 10 messages and we'll hand we are handling it them again. Okay, so after we will handle all the 10 messages again, we'll have the same result if our logic is idempotent. Okay, so if our logic is both idempotent and associative, both crashing and the order of the messages, the or the arrival order doesn't really matter to us. So if we can write a logic that is associative and idempotent, we can have very, very robust and very, very simple uh, logic of recovery and message receiving. We don't have to deal with the order of the messages, we don't care, and we don't have to deal with the number of times we are uh, retransmitting the same messages. You have watched an episode about idempotent and associative logic. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more quality related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist.